relationship between culture and the state. I, 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 at least in the 70s, there was hardly anything of that kind away. <coughs> Although, <coughs> as you know, there has been a long tradition of state patronage uh, in India and in various uh, states. In fact, in the realms of classical music, classical dance, libraries, literature, poetry, etc., the state patronage mattered very, very much. <coughs> also around mid-70s, languages of India started being pushed out <coughs> of the regional and the national agenda. If you now look at the, what are they called, the manifestos, <coughs> the election manifestos, you'll find none of them mentions anything about languages. In the 70s, in fact, late 60s, they had set up huge translation programs funded by the state for translation of knowledge into regional languages. But simultaneously, the other step of making this translated stuff usable in the institutions did not happen. So the languages did not become, uh, shall we say, the medium of instruction at the higher level nor did they become knowledge producing systems. So if you look at, if you look at the purpose of work, academic work that is available, there is very little about the relationship between state and the culture. Although, how many decades have passed since we became independent? The colonial mindset in India had created two kinds of dichotomies which did not exist before. One of them between the arts and the crafts. So the arts became, you know, more honorable, the crafts became more skill oriented. There was vision in arts, there was only skill in the crafts. And the second was that some arts became classical and others became modern. By a strange logic, <coughs> literature, theatre and visual arts were in the modern category and music and dance became classic. Now, until the 19th century, if you recall, all these arts shared they shared symbolic, symbolism, they shared imagery, they shared narratives, they shared many values and styles and things that kind. But after that, this dichotomy, this modernist intervention, all dialogue, unless carried out at personal level, out of some personal uh, requirement, as it were, ceased between. So you don't find classical musicians reading contemporary poetry. You don't find contemporary poets re listening to or watching classical dance and things of that kind. Nobody knows what's happening in the other. And not only nobody knows, nobody thinks it's worth knowing as to. And this is contrary both to the modernist tradition in the West. After all, Impressionism was not merely something which took place in, in visual arts. It also took place in theatre, it also took place in music, etc. So what modern did in the West was a fragmented tradition being brought together. In India it did just the other. It created a fragmentation where a close proximity and interactive relationship had already existed. Anyway, so this was uh, one of the things that happened and that got entrenched. Now, this is the broad theoretical, 
shall we say, background of what I did when I came on the scene. Mind you, I'm a remarkably impetuous, irrepressible, but immature civil servant. My age, my age in service is only seven years, out of which I have spent about four years as collector and I arrive in Bhopal, which is known to be a city of three Bs, Purkas, Buffaloes and Babus. And none of them had anything to do with culture. Now, here am I being asked to do what I had myself been saying, that a state should have a responsibility just as it has in other fields. So I start doing it. Now, how to make the state support, promote, and honor culture without any ideological interference? Now, luckily, two things had happened. One was that Arjun Singh was a liberal, well-educated person. And the second was Congress has no rigid ideology. So it was a bit of a hold on you know, in, in which all kinds of things, uh, right and left and this and that, could all be accommodated and put. So there was no ideological interference. The water in Madhya Pradesh depended very strongly on this sheer coincidence and individuals. And this is an important point to remember because Madhya Pradesh had been formed recently as a state. It had elements of various regions who had come with their own local traditions and this, that and the other. Now to weave them, integrate them all into a... At that time I used to argue that we are the most cosmopolitan of the states because we have seven states on our borders. We are the only one. We were the largest in area. We are the largest tribal population. We had the, I mean, many things of that kind. But that was not enough to put together. So the effort was how to make all this happen without the state interfering. And the device was very simple. The device was the state, even if it wanted to interfere, could interfere only through me. Because I am the person in charge. So, when the Department of Culture came into being in 1980, although my work started in 73, I became the first founding secretary of the Department of Culture. And very unusually, remained the Secretary Culture for 10 years. No civil servant is allowed to remain on a job for so long. So they used to add other jobs to me. I became Education Secretary but remained Culture. I became Tourism Secretary, I became Secretary of Science and Technology, Culture remained. So that pattern, the other thing was, and this is the problem, which the academies have suffered from, which is excellence versus representation. If you have to have representation of every state like you have in the national academies, then you are bound to be militating against excellence. So this was another problem. And the other problem was how to involve uh, various levels of youth, young people. And I had this mad notion that a co-sharing rasikta, you know, a connoisseurship of the art, could still be rehabilitated. And I tried that experiment and to a certain extent I succeeded. So there were about 300 odd people in Bhopal who would come to a show of Swaminathan or 
नलनी मलानी विवान सुंदरम और जो शो हुसैन एट्सेट्रा दे विल ऑल्सो कम टू कॉन्सर्ट ऑफ कुमार गंधर एंड मल्लिकार्जुन मंसूर दे विल ऑल्सो कम इन सी प्लेज बाई हबीब तनवीर एंड सच लाइक दे विल ऑल्सो कम इन लिसन टू ए के रामानुजन एंड पोइट्स फ्रॉम मलयालम एंड बंगाली एंड थिंग्स दैट इन दर दे वॉज अ हार्ड ग्रुप ऑफ थ्री हंड्रेड विच सम हाउ डॉट क्रिएटेड एंड दे विल कम टू ऑल दीज इवेंट्स and how we had 45 districts at that time my argument was that why can't people of shahdor watch a yamni krishna murti dance why can't uh, villagers in in i mean you know tikamgar people see sonal mansi in fact the incident is very i mean there is a very interesting incident sonal mansi went to dance in tikamgar i told her that tikamgar in that area is a ram country and ramcharit manas is very popular there so there were 400 years of ramcharit manas and she had done this pushpa vaati culture nice piece so please go and do that apart from other things then she rang me up after 3 days and usually when a dancer having gone to one of those backward district with open jeep and rest house um, mosquitoes and um, bugs and such like so i thought she is going to complain to me wala to pani nahi theek milta ya chai you know so she said ashok i had the most exhilarating experience in my life because when my people started singing the chopais of sundar kaam Five thousand people in the audience were singing along because they knew their chopais, and and this was, you know. Anyways, <clears throat> these kinds of so they everything should happen in districts also in in divisions also. So we started <clears throat> making these kind. In the seventeen years I was there, <clears throat> we created. and it was in which almost all major and talented young major right right writers artists performers and talented young to come to madhya pradesh in fact i used to be told by some young musicians and dancers ki sir if we cannot write that we have been invited by madhya pradesh to perform here and there our bio data will not look impressive so that was the kind of prestige so we created a series of things kajraho dance fest kalila samaroh was restructured tanse samaroh was restructured uh, we, i created a, a series of institutions see bharat bhavan came in 82 But between 1972 and 82, the 10 years have passed, and we created a Dhrupad Kendra, we created a Chakradhar Nitya Kendra, we created a Madhya Pradesh Adivasi Lok Kala Parishad, and things of that kind. And they all worked. They all worked well at a level of competence that was not exactly the best in the world, but reasonably good. Our first production. Dhrupad came, for instance, with the Gundecha brothers and Udaya uh, Bhavalka, who are now the first-ranking Dhrupad performers. They were the first. Students. The other thing was to how the state must feel humble before creativity. So I did three things. One was. that in none of our programs were inaugurated at all most of the programs just started on time <laughs> now to impose punctuality in a state capital is impossible but we once we started a concert with five people in the audience and the other 500 came much later but we insisted on the second was no ticketed performance no complimentaries to anybody i made the governor buy the tickets and of course i made the chief minister buy the tickets three no inauguration by 
politicians or senior bureaucrats, chief secretary, they prajwaran karenge, nothing of that kind. If there has to be a formal inauguration, it will be done by artists. So a Khajraho dance festival being inaugurated by Malikarjun Mansur, Habib Tanvir, Girish Karnat, etc., etc., Kumar Gandhar. And the folk and tribal traditions of Madhya Pradesh, which were very rich, finally led, and I had the huge good luck of having Jaddi Swaminathan to come and take care of the Rupankar music. And there, for the first time in free India, a museum was built which had folk and tribal art and the so-called urban art together. And this was trying to redefine the contemporary. The contemporary was not just what the urbans do, even people who live in jungles and villages are also contemporary, and what they do is contemporary. Then <clears throat> the, the social security names of artists, which are never taken care of. So we created a system of pensions to artists in, in direct circumstances. And one of the rules was that the person may not apply, but somebody else brings to the notice of the government, it's such and such old artist, or a uh, Nacha artist, or a Sarangi player, or I don't know who, uh, is in indigent circumstances. So the government on that could sanction a pension. We did out. I mean, while I was there are about a thousand events relating to music, dance, folk, music, theatre, cinema, archaeology, what you have. We published a huge number of journals. There was a journal of archaeology called Puratan. There was a journal of cinema, serious cinema. And we started calling it Shastriya Cinema. Interested, there is Shastri Sangeet. Why not Shastri cinema called Patkatha? We have a journal of criticism called Puragra. We had a journal of creative writing called Sakshatka. We had a journal uh, devoted to folk and tribal arts called Chaumasa and such like that. So we are trying to build up and through this process we started learning that the you know, it's a very strange dilemma in the creative community. You want museums, Ravidra Bhavans and such like, they can only be built by, by the state. But you want that the state should not interfere. And most states, including Bihar for instance, they had the Premchand Ramakshala which was occupied, I don't know by whom, and there was a march in Karant and Nimiji, etc. did a public march in spite of that. Finally, I think it has been relieved uh, or released in a certain sense. But otherwise, uh, these places were occupied by management. Uh, some management institute used to come up because these facilities were very readily available. Now, very briefly, I'll tell you the story of Bharat Bhavan. 25 years of India's independence and it occurred to the government of India that each state should have a Bharat Bhava, which is a kind of a unity, diversity kind of approach. They had no clear idea as to what would happen there. They thought there will be a place of, for Assam and there will be a place for Bihar and there will be a place for Tamil Nadu and things of that kind. A very loose idea. And they wrote, and the government of Madhya Pradesh was one of the first ones to accept. And I was made the secretary of the committee, which was headed by the chief secretary. But, government of India, as is characteristic of India, very soon wrote back saying that we are not going to financially support it anymore. So you go ahead if you want. But otherwise, no central funds will be available. 
Now, luckily, our government decided to go ahead with it. And Charles Correa was selected to do the buildings. There was also a grant given to Madhya Pradesh to create a regional center of the Lalit Kala Academy. So we decided that we will incorporate that within this complex. And we later realized that this was a mistake, so we sent back the money, uh, saying you no know, regional center can be allowed here, because the Lalit Kala politics had become, by that time, quite dirty. Anyway, so, before Bharat Bhavan came into being, we have set up a state gallery of art, a state theatre repertory, a library of world poetry. And action had started on that. I had persuaded Swaminathan to come, Karam to come, and Nirmal Varma was there. And